Head, Big Head here, and I'm on the Brood Squad. Today we're going to be conducting another opposing fan interview, this time with a Chicago Cubs fan. He's from Illinois. His name's Michael. We're going to get down into the nitty-gritty and find out what makes this Cub fan tick. All right, guys. It's Ed Big Head here. We're back again, azstankbit.com, and I'm on the Brood Squad. And today we are happy to uh, be joined by Michael Guilfoyle, who is a lifelong Cubs fan. He's from Illinois. And uh, in a way, he's actually kind of a, a celebrity as well. And so we'll start off oh, with boy. that. Oh, I hear that you were in a, a major motion picture called The Blues Brothers. That's true. <laughs> I was in The Blues Brothers. Yes, what, 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 what character did you play? I was a Nazi in The Blues Brothers. I was typecast, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Nazi. I was called to be a National Guardsman. And uh, they, they changed it when they saw me. And they said, you're going to be a Nazi, which didn't mean anything at the time. But uh, as you know, they... Uh, Lucy and Aykroyd drive, uh, drive the Nazis off the bridge, so yes. So did you actually go flying off the bridge then? We did not. They brought stuntmen in to do that, and we went to the edge of the bridge and cut it, and then they, we picked it up from in the water. How great was it that in that movie you guys actually chased them to Wrigley Field when they got up the long ass? <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> and something? here you are, here you are. So you're a, a lifelong uh, Cubs fan. Um, first question, what part of Mesa do you live in? <laughs> <laughs> no, I only came down to visit them when they were in Mesa. That's all I did. But I, I did I do other than surprise. Okay. Okay. How long have you lived in Arizona? Uh, well, we lived here early on in 2005 for about a year, a, year, a little longer, stronger than a year, and now we're back permanently, and we live here uh, about three, four months now. Did you happen to make it to any of the games in 2007 where we played each other, the Diamondbacks and the Cubs in the National League Division? No, I did not. No? no? Okay. That was a great series. I was fortunate to see one of those games here in Arizona. Mm -hmm. So, uh, did you, I assume then you watch them on TV as a Cubs fan, right? I do. Okay. I do, yeah. Not, not always throughout my whole life, yes, I have always watched the Cubs. So tell me about uh, Epstein and Hoyer's impact on the Cubs thus far. Tremendous. I mean, it, they changed the world. They changed the world for us. You know, I mean, they were, they were a godsend. Uh, nothing happened until they got there. Nothing happened for, as you know, a hundred years. Right. <laughs> you know. So, uh, Cole Hamels, you guys picked him up. Um, he's 4-0, 34 innings pitched. Uh, you know, 0 0.79 ERA. He's the first Cubs pitcher to throw a complete game this season. How excited are you about Cole Hamels? I'm excited about Cole Hamels. Yeah. He pitched really good the other night too, as well, and. Uh, He's doing well, and uh, I think he's an added uh, added plus to our rotation. You know, with uh, what more can you ask for? Comes out, and the other guy is um, Bodie at third base. Right. Look at that! You don't even know that uh, Bryant is is gone. Yeah, you know, he's, he's he's playing good. Speaking of Bryant, um, he hasn't played since July 23rd. He's having some sh uh, left shoulder discomfort. Are you worried about his return? Not as far as Bodie's playing. <laughs> 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 I think he should be worried about his return. <laughs> Yeah, Bodie really has uh, really has been doing something great this year. Wow. So back to pitching. Obviously, Cole Hamels is doing well. Lester is uh, typically uh, doing well. Tell us about you, Darvish. Are you upset about that contract and that he's out for the remainder of the season? You know, I don't know what happened there. I really don't. With you, Darvish, I, I don't know if he. I didn't follow him much before. I mean, he was with the Dodgers. Obviously, I know what was going on there, but. My God, what a disappointment! I mean, and and then there's the air of uh, that he's faking it. You know, there there's some s speculation on that. Although that's been diminished in the last week or so, uh, they've kind of verified that he's got some. Definitely, he's got some injuries there. Uh, but for the longest time, he didn't. You know, I was even thinking, well, maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't have an injury. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of our our scenario with Brandon Webb when he was a Diamondback. You know, just kept coming. The doctors kept coming in saying, "There's nothing in there. He's fine. He's fine." But still on the mound, there was. An obvious problem there. So I'm going to ask a question um, submitted by Turnbar here through the uh, uh, Messenger app. Turnbar wants to know: Does the Ivy relinquish lost balls, or are they forever lost in an alternative universe where the St. Louis Cardinals win every year? <laughs> <laughs> they bounce out. They bounce out. <laughs> so is it really Molina on the other side? I mentioned tossing them back into Wrigley. <laughs> I, I will tell you one anecdotal story that, uh, that is kind of funny. There used to have a manager in 1983 named Lee Elia. He came, I think he came out of Philadelphia. Well, the, the reporter was doing an interview with him and he left his, his uh, tape on there. And if anybody wants to ever Google that, Google the Lee Elia tirade. It's a, an incredible tirade. That it's on YouTube, on. is it? Oh, oh my God. It he, he goes off on the fans. They were, they were 50. Oh, and four and fifteen or something like the first month of baseball, 
and he just goes off on these guys and the fans. You know, I got 3,000 fans out here who can't find a fucking job, and they're telling me how to do my fucking job. <laughs> Lazy bums who shouldn't be anywhere, and they, they can't do anything, and he just goes off on them. Every other word is F this, F that. It's a great tirade, go up. But that's what we lived with with the Cubs for over 100 years. I mean, that's what we had. They were in the playoffs, obviously, in the 30s and stuff like that, but, but uh, they never made the World Series. You know, the last World Series I had was, you know, I think 100 years ago, with the time that they played, so... This is what we had. We had those guys. <laughs> and then we had uh, a story that I just recently heard. I'm, I'm sorry if I'm going off. On no, no, no. I want to hear the story. There was a Ryan Dempster was a pitcher with the Cubs. And he, uh, he just recently, he's, he's really popular now in Chicago. He's from Canada. He was a relief pitcher with the Cubs. So he's pitching for the Cubs, his big debut. He's pitching for the Cubs. They're losing eight to nothing. It's like the, the eighth or ninth inning. It's 30 degrees. It's opening day. And he's trying to nibble the corners and, and get, the, get the batter out. Lou Pinella, famous manager, comes out and says, Son, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Dempster says, Skip, what do you mean what am I doing? I'm trying to, I'm working the batter. Working the... He said, Son, it's 30 degrees. We're down by eight runs. There's no fucking way we're going to win the game. Throw the ball over the plate and let him hit it. <laughs> that's what we live with. Let right? your defense do the job, right? Exactly. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. That's, that's our manager for management for 100 years. Oh, great. That's a great story. That is a, that's, it's a recent story, too. Uh, yeah, because Dempster Pin just told it on the radio. Pinella, Pinella was the manager in 2007, again, referencing back when we played you guys in the NLDS. So, um, you're obviously from Chicago, and uh, you've been to the ballpark. So, troughed or urinal? It, it was a trough for uh, how many years? It was a trough. They, they still got it in there? I think they still have it in there. So, okay, you walk in, the urinal's open, the trough's open. Which one are you going for? Whatever's open. <laughs> then how you got to go? <laughs> so back to the Cubs and the uh, Diamondbacks relationship. You had Miguel Montero on your team in 2017. Miggy. Yes. Miggy. And uh, him and Jake Arietta Arietta had some problems. Miggy brought them uh, out to the public. So I'm going to quote uh, Miguel Montero here. That's the reason they were running left and right today, Miguel Montero says, because Arietta was slow to the plate. Was he way out of line with his comments on I, that? I don't think Miggy was out of line. I think Arietta, Arietta had an ego that was really big. He, he performed. He was tremendous. Right. But uh, he, he was the downfall in that, in that little confrontation they had there. I don't think it was Montero. Montero was kind of a low-key kind of guy right. from, from what I really remember. You know, he was always low-key and he didn't... He didn't blast anybody, but he really came out that day. And did. Yeah, and, and shortly after that, he was DFA'd. Exactly. I would say it was like the day uh, or two later. <laughs> exactly. And then in the end, Arietta was not tendered a, a contract in the off season. He became a free agent. It took him forever to sign, and now he's with the Phillies. Yeah. So apparently, they didn't want Miguel Montero or Jake, uh, Jake Arietta on that team yeah, anymore. I, I really like. I did like Jake Arietta outside of his, uh, his attitude. He was just he, a little arrogant, you know. But he had it. He had to back it up. It was like the quarterback for the Bears, McMahon, was. Arrogant too, but he backed it up. So again, let's continue with the Diamondbacks Cubs relationship. I know you said you hadn't watched too much of, the, of baseball this year, but um, earlier this year, July 25th or July 24th, um, Steven Souza slid hard into second base, and it was a hard slide. Um, it didn't look like he was trying to really stop the double play or, or cause injury, but it was a hard, aggressive slide. Anthony Rizzo um, told uh, uh, Steven Souza he needed to learn how to slide. Have you seen videos of Rizzo sliding? Yes, yeah. in the home plate. When he, he goes after the catcher, yeah. And there's some where he's going after the shortstop or the yes. second baseman yeah. as well. So, is is that just him in the in the moment of frustration and trying to back up his guys, or is is there an arrogance about Rizzo? No, I don't think so. I, okay. I think Rizzo's a to me he's a really class guy. Uh, little known fact that he does he was a cancer survivor. And what he did uh, many times there, he went to the hospitals and brought bats and balls to the kids, unbeknownst. The media was not involved. He's kind of a low-key kind of guy and did that. Um, I, I don't know if he was just defending his players or, you know, what was going on there. Um, but because he's not like that kind of guy. He's a really congenial guy, I mean, which, which was out of character. And I saw the confrontation at first base when right. they were talking and all that kind of stuff. And I really wonder... If that's what he said, that's what he said. Right. He says that's what he did, you know, so I don't know. That's essentially what he said, but we'll move past it. Cause, yeah. uh, we know that the Lord Emperor Paul Goldschmidt is actually America's first baseman. Yeah. And the best <laughs> first baseman in the National he, League. Hey, he came through last night. <laughs> he got a home run last night. I was actually at the game last yeah. night. It was a tremendous home run. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love watching that. 
So um, let's talk about Zobrist. Thoughts on him? He came over after winning the World Series with the Kansas City Royals, uh, won the World Series with the Chicago Cubs, was the 2016 World Series MVP. MajorLeagueBaseball.com today came out and said that he is the most overlooked player on the Cubs this season. Do you think that that's the case? Yeah, probably so. I, I think that for the last couple of years. He's a, he's a utility player. He can play anywhere, basically. Uh, hits the ball, clutch situations. He's, uh, he's right on top of things. I mean, he's in there. He knows the game. He knows where to throw the ball when it's, you know, I mean, he's never in doubt. Right. Um, I would say I agree with that. That came out today? Yeah, um, either yesterday or today. Oh, really? They listed 30, all 30 teams in there, uh, uh, the most overlooked player on each team. Who was on the Diamondbacks? Take a guess. Not Goldie. No. No. Not Goldie no. at all. Oh, Pollock. AJ Pollock. Mm -hmm. It was Daniel Descalso. So say Descalso. Oh, yeah. So, who we call this Glutcho. I don't know if you've ever heard uh, heard that out. Well, I, yeah, the other night they had all the different names on the back of the team, and yeah, they, they had a lot of different things there. Did they have him as that? As no, that? his no. was Scouse, which is S C A L S, but we call him this Glutcho, and there's mm -hmm. some memes out there floating around that we started exactly. for all those that are listening. So, I think Zobris was definitely right on being the MVP of that World Series. He was, he was, he was everything. Right, everything. I mean, there was other good players. How'd you feel after they won? I mean, oh, just the, the drought is over. Are you kidding? Can you describe the moment that it happened for you? Yes, I can. Okay. Because my whole family lived in that neighborhood, six blocks from the park. My father could have went to the 1945 World Series, but he chose. He was a teenager. He chose to park cars and get get cash for. They parked underneath the L train, which they did, couldn't do. It was illegal, and they had to pay the cops off to park them <laughs> under the L train. And his, his word that time, he told me, were the Cubs will be in the World Series next year. That was 1945. Right. He died. He never saw a World Series. I never saw a World Series my whole life. I cried. I mean, I cried. I just stood there and cried because they didn't see it. My mother, never, nobody ever saw it. You know, my wife never saw it. Or my father-in-law never saw that. And to watch that moment evolve, it was like, it's over. Right. This, this curse or whatever they called it or whatever was going on. Being that I worked at the park, my grandmother worked at the park, I was at the game, I saw Roberto Clemente, Willie Mays, I saw all the great Stan Musial, I got to see them when I worked at the park because I got the tickets for the day. Never saw anything like that. And we had some of the great players of the 69 World Series, 69 uh, pennant race. Ernie Banks, nice. Santo, Beckert, Kessinger, and for years they were held on a pedestal. But in reality, they were the biggest losers I'd ever had. Because in the middle of August, they're, they're in first place. They've won so many games. And then by the middle of September, the Mets beat them out. And they tanked. And for years, they were the heroes. And they're nice guys. They were really good guys. Uh, real class acts. But really, in the big scheme of things, they were the biggest losers that ever were. You know? As a Chicago Cubs fan, who, who do you feel, personally, is the Cubs' biggest rival in Major League Baseball? Nationally? It's always been St. Louis. St. Louis Cardinals. It's always been St. Louis. Yeah. I love it. Okay. And now it seems to be Milwaukee. Does it? Yeah, it does. It seems to be Milwaukee. Can you expand on that. Why do you think? I think there's a there's a kind of a natural rivalry rivalry between Milwaukee and Chicago. There's a little bit of tension between those. Milwaukee's like the stepsister, of, you know, of everything. <laughs> the and, ugly and, stepsister. Yeah, the ugly stepsister. <laughs> you go out there, and when you go to a game, it's it's all Cup fans because it's nice. It's a nice park. It's cheap. I think they resent us a little bit coming up there and doing that, and right. I think it's become well, more. Rough. And they got, they got as of recent, they've had some good, good, good teams. I think the Diamondbacks fans resent you guys for coming yeah, out every game, game as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> with, your, with all of that, all the blue, all that support that you guys got. But you said the Diamondbacks are your second favorite second team favorite since team. you've made Arizona your home. Yes, sir. Uh, tell me about the the job that Joe Madden's done. Aside from the World Series, I mean, obviously, yeah, that's great. But do you think he's still doing a good job? I do. I do. I think he's good. Yeah, I think he's still in there. He's. Uh, he seems to know how to handle players. Uh, he's like a, an old hippie, you know. He's a, he has that van that he drives around. He had a van that he drove around with. And I think uh, Joe Madden, he, he has a way with players. He can talk. He doesn't have much tension or or or, or um, disagreements with players. Excellent. Let me look up Turnbar's second question here on the Messenger app. So Turnbar wants to know: During a typical Cubs game, how many liters of beer would Harry Carey consume? <laughs> and he did do it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. A six know. pack, maybe? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely a six pack. Was he pre gaming pretty hard, too? Yeah, he would pre game. He was post game, uh, I think, more so. But uh, from what I hear, what he, the places he would he would frequent after the game. Look at that kid with the sombrero. 
so a since, nice so looking youngster. As I'm looking at my other questions here, if since you're uh, you know here in Arizona now, what do you think of Chase Field? Beautiful park. Gorgeous like park. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I, Wrigley is nostalgic and it's there for the history. Mm -hmm. But for years, Wrigley was like you said, the troughs and the bathrooms, and it was a dump. It was a dump. It was it was terrible. There was you know they the bricks, the walls were falling, the concrete was falling, everything was falling. Uh, Chase Field's tremendous. It's very similar, to, in my opinion, and we thought so. My wife and I thought so the other day to Milwaukee's uh, Brewery. Yeah, very nice. Very yeah, nice if story. Milwaukee didn't have the open roof, right. a lot of times when you're watching on TV, it, it, it almost looks identical. It does. It's yeah. really a nice park. And it, when we were here before in 05, they had a thing which the Cubs never did anything for the fans, really. But the, the Diamondbacks had, uh, if the kids brought their report card in and they had good grades, they could get the, you know, a discount on the tickets, which I thought was tremendous. It was really family oriented, and I, I kind of like that, you know. This traditionalist baseball there, yep. family orientation. Yep. So tell me about the mascot, Ronnie Woo Woo Wickers. Oh my God. I, I, when studying up on the Cubs before this interview, I was like, wow, this unknown, uh, and he was a janitor, apparently. Did he have a job? I don't think he had a job. Are you kidding? Ronnie Woo Woo Wickers, they used to, they used to get him drunk left and right every day. He, he never bought a beer in his life. Wow. Because he would just, Ronnie, woo, Ronnie, woo, Ronnie, woo. That's what he did. He was an idiot. So he would, So it sounds like he was actually the brute squad, but the Chicago <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't want to cast the shadow on the brute squad, but Ronnie Woo Woo was, he was a Johnny, I don't know. I don't know. He was something else. He was, he'd just stand there and do that the whole time. Yeah. Ronnie, woo, Ronnie, woo. And then they'd buy him a beer and he'd do it some more. You get sick of him. You got to get away from him because he was—he was just. Running so Woo. most fans are like, "Ah, oh, get Ronnie Wu out oh, of here. He needs yeah. to shut up." Yeah, you got to go sit somewhere else, Ronnie. <laughs> yeah, he was something. I, I don't even know if he's still around. If he's still alive. So I think we've only got a couple minutes left here. Um, name me your favorite uh, Chicago Cub Hall of Famer that's on the actual na on the actual Chicago Cubs Hall of Fame. Ernie Banks. Ernie Banks, favorite player ever. Very congenial man, very nice man. Uh, I can tell you that when I was a kid and I worked at the park, every night Ernie Banks would stand out there and sign every lost autograph till every last kid was gone. He was a tremendous guy. He, he, his personality was the same every day. Let's play two. Uh, just a very, and, and probably had some hardships coming up through because he played in the Negro League, the old Negro League and stuff like that. I'm sure he had a lot of hardships, but just a tremendous attitude, a tremendous player. Very good. He's my all time favorite. Did you like him better at shortstop or first base? Well, he was a shortstop. I liked him as a shortstop initially. I remember that pretty right. well. Uh, he was a very good shortstop. But uh, yeah, first base was just somewhere he had to go when he was older, I think. So you used to work at Wrigley as a, as a kid. I did. What were you doing there? Picking up beer cups. And just for Mother Nature, or they were paid? No, no, they were paid. What you'd do is you'd go there in the morning. They played day baseball. That's all they played was day baseball. So there was a cleanup crew after the game at night, and then the next morning you would go there, and I would see a guy by the name of Pete Mark Antonio. We'd go down into the bowels of Cubs Park. Pete, where do you want me to go? Okay, depending on the crew of kids he had from the neighborhood, go to right field, go to bleachers, go to left field. You go over there and pick up the cups, bring them over to a dumpster, and then when you're done, you go down and see Pete, and you'd say, what day you want, kid? He'd smoke the cigar. He'd go, what day you want, kid? I want tomorrow, Pete, Mr. Man, Mark Antonio. I want tomorrow, or I want next Tuesday, because you got a buddy you wanted to give your pass to. And then you worked another day and got a pass for yourself. So that's what I did. And uh, Then I would stay into the park, because the batting practice started after that. And if I could sneak behind the pillar or sit behind the, the, the chairs, in, that, in those days they had folding chairs down in the box seats. You'd have to pick the folding chairs up, let the guys sweep, pick the cups up, and then put them back. That's shortly after that, that changed. But uh, that's what I did. I did that. And, it was a lovely, lovely experience. I got to see all the great players. Got foul, foul balls left and right because I'd stay there. And then the Annie Frayne ushers who policed the area would shag you out of there. Hey, kid, get out of here. You're going to go. <laughs> go till the game started. So do you have a massive collection of signed memorabilia? You know, it's gone cards? now. It's, it's gone, yeah. But I had a lot of baseball cards, Ernie Banks, uh, you know, a lot of cards and everything. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Most uh, memorable moment at Wrigley Field? At Wrigley Field? Mm hmm. Uh, drinking a beer every half inning uh, and making seven innings. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, 
baddest guys on the brute squad. Because that's exactly what. Well, I don't drink anymore. That's the problem. Man. Yeah, no, no, and you know, you don't have to anymore. But I mean, that's exactly what some of our stories are like. You know, because you know, that seventh inning, they cut you off. So there's there's the draft room inside Chase Field. Well, I passed out by that time. So. <laughs> well, we're still alive. Uh, we're looking for the nearest burrito place about the seventh and a half inning in some cases. So. Um, okay, so no, I, I, I will tell you this: when you, when, if you ever go to Wrigley Field, when you walk up the stairs of Wrigley Field, tell me if I'm wrong. When you walk in that front gate and you walk up the stairs to Wrigley Field, and you you see the green of the, mm-hmm. of the stadium and the ivy and everything. It, it, it gives you chills. It just gives you chills because there's a lot of history. I mean, even if you're not a Cub fan, right? There's you know Fenway and and Wrigley Field, two great parks that you got to go to and you got to see the green wall and you walk up there and you see it and there it is. And then you see Wrigley Field, the Ivy. Yeah. I took a tour of Wrigley and it was amazing. And you guys weren't actually playing that day. Yeah. And uh, But every bar around Wrigley was full of Cubs fans. Yeah. They were all drinking and eating. They probably yeah. didn't know there wasn't a game that day. <laughs> they, they, they might not have because we were able to sneak by in our Diamondbacks gear and <laughs> with no harm coming upon us. So. I, I think the Cubs fans are pretty congenial. They're not going to bother you. It's not yeah. like Philly really where you're going to want to fight your yeah. team. They, hey, they like things. So far, so far, we've had great experience with Cubs fans. So. Mm-hmm. Typically Dodger fans and Philly fans that don't get along with us. So, um, again, this is Michael Guilfoyle, um, and we thank him. He's going to be at the uh, uh, the game on uh, September 18th. Yes, sir. Okay, so, and we'll probably be there as well. We hope that you are. You can catch this interview on azstinkbit.com or facebook.com slash the Squad. Thank you, Michael. We appreciate it. Thank you. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Go